All right, let's look at some functions this time around. Uh, good day, everyone. And once again, we're back. Your favorite uncle is here with you. Uh, looking at the 2023 uh, May exam. Uh, of course, I know that most of you are preparing and, you know, making sure that you're ready when those exams come. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family and let's get right into it without any further ado. Right, looking at functions in question four, they're giving us a function there, which is P of X, which is one over three uh, to the power of X, right? Now they're asking, is this an increasing or decreasing function, okay? So um, I want you to note in this case, uh, we are looking at an exponential graph, okay? But in this case, we are looking at a graph um, you know, uh, so usually what an exponential graph would look like, let's say a to uh, the exponent x, okay, so that graph would look something like this, okay, but now uh, we've got 1 over 3. Now, when the base is less than 1, okay, like it is in this case, so we can actually write it as 1 over 3, okay, to the power x, this is the same as 3 base of negative 1, I mean uh, power negative 1 of x, so we can write it as 3 minus x. So what have we in fact done, right? We've reflected the graph around the y-axis, right? So in this case, what you would have uh, is a graph that looks uh, like this, okay? So it would definitely be a decreasing function. Why? Because as you increase right, going towards x, uh, I mean, towards the positive x, your y values actually decrease, right, so to answer that first question, is this an increasing or decreasing function, okay, it is definitely a decreasing function, okay, right, so let's uh, answer the second question, so they say to us, uh, determine the uh, um, the inverse of the graph, right, in the form y is equal to. Now, let's start with the first one. Okay, let me just move this stuff here. Okay, so let's start with p of x. So when we write down the um, original equation px, y is equal to um, 1 over 3, okay, to the power of x, okay, or uh, if we wanted to write it down nicely, uh, we said we can write it as y is 3 uh, to the minus x, right? Now, when we write down the inverse of the graph, okay, right? So what's that going to look like? We're going to swap the y and the x. So in this case, what do we end up with? We end up with x is equal to base 3, of minus y. Now, what we need to do is uh, rewrite that, um, you know, as uh, in the form y is equal to, right? So what we do is we introduce logs on both sides. So log of x is equal to log uh, of base 3 of minus y, right? So the principle of logs, remember, what we can do is that uh, that exponent can jump down Okay, so we've got log of x, which is equal to minus y, log of 3, right? So um, now uh, we can divide both sides by log 3, okay, log 3 and log 3 there. Okay, so that uh, becomes negative, okay, right, so let's write that down nicely. Minus y is equal to, okay, I keep trying to get this guy away. So negative y is equal to log uh, of x, right? So we can write this as uh, that base 3, right, and uh, of x. So uh, to write it down um, fully, so y would be equal to, now we can multiply by negative on both sides. So this can be uh, minus the log of base 3 of x. Or if you want to, you can write it uh, 
uh, you can actually also have minus log base 3 in fact uh, if you remove that minus 1 there right and put it as minus 1 over there which would be the same as log of base 3 1 over x so whichever one uh, amongst these uh, would be plausible uh, but in my own case i would actually prefer this answer over here all right i hope that makes sense so that's the inverse of the graph okay so now they say to us write down the equation of the asymptote of p of p of x minus five so what does that mean it means that they've taken the graph and they've shifted it five units right down so note in this case uh, under normal circumstances our graph would have actually had an asymptote at x is equal to zero uh, rather y is equal to zero right uh, that would be our asymptote there okay so at y is equal to zero right but now with taking this graph we are moving it five units down so that means that our asymptote will now be at negative five okay so uh, our asymptote will be y is equal to uh, negative five so that number that's 4.1.4 4.1.4 uh, asymptote will be y is equal to minus 5 and that's why they said to you just write it down uh, because obviously that's just a, a one workout okay right so uh, let's write that uh, so that was 4.1.3 right so where we are dealing with the inverse all right let's go on to the next one so they give us a hyperbola right so um, uh, we know in this case when we've got a hyperbola we know that represents uh, our horizontal asymptote right uh, our vertical asymptote rather and this would be a horizontal asymptote okay right now they say to you write down the equation of the asymptotes right so for our hyperbola we know we are going to have an asymptote at x is equal to 1 right so that is for our vertical asymptote please remember that we change the sign and uh, for the one uh, for the vertical one uh, rather for the horizontal one we're going to have it at y is equal to 2 which is represented by this guy there right so uh, just as easy as that remember the x1 changes sign but the one uh, for y retains the sign okay right so the next one they say to us calculate the x intercept of f right so we've got f of x is equal to 4 over x minus 1 uh, plus 2 um, but remember in this case when we want the x intercept what does it mean it means that y would be equal to zero so it means that f of x would be actually equal to zero so we've got four over x minus one uh, which is equal to and i'm taking this to the other side it becomes negative two so i'm just going to write it as negative two over one right so let's cross multiply quickly okay so we're going to have a negative two into x minus one uh, which is equal to four times one when we cross multiply that will be equal to four so we can divide both sides by negative two right so we've got x minus one is equal to negative two and so x would be equal to if we take this to the other side it becomes positive so that's minus two plus one which is equal to x is uh, minus one okay now ladies and gents what does it mean it means that my uh, um, my x intercept okay will be at x is minus one so um, my x intercept okay will be at negative one and zero all right please keep that in mind so it means it cuts through the x axis at minus one and zero okay right so the next one um 
Now they say to us, sketch the graph of F, label all the asymptotes and indicate the intercepts with the axes, right? Um, so what we also need to do in that case then uh, is just get the y-intercept. Okay, so I'm going to do that just now. So um, uh, that's uh, 4.2.3. So to get the y-intercept, okay, uh, y-intercept, this is where x is equal to 0. Um, so we've got... Uh, f of 0, which is 4 over 0 minus 1 uh, plus 2. Okay, so remember we're substituting 0 for x there. Okay, so we've got um, 4 divided by negative 1, which is negative 4 plus 2, and that will give us negative 2. So we've got our y intercept at 0 and negative 2. Now, Let's try and draw that graph, okay? I'm not going to uh, draw an accurate graph, okay? Just a depiction of what we want. We know we've got an asymptote at 1, okay? So what I'm going to do is just indicate those asymptote, uh, asymptotes with a different color, right? So we've got an asymptote at 1, okay? So there's our asymptote there as well as another one at y is equal to 2, okay? So there's the uh, another asymptote. So this is where we've got 2, and here we've got 1, okay? So we know that uh, because the a value, okay, this value here is positive, so it means that our graph will exist um, in the first, okay, uh, I just erased that mistakenly, right? So it will exist in the first quadrant, okay, as well as, okay, so I want to just use a different color there, right? So in the first quadrant, so that would be your first graph, okay, as well as in your third quadrant. So that means that our next uh, graph would be somewhat there, all right? So now we know that the graph is cutting, um, so that's at negative 1 and 0, okay? So, all right, so we made an error here. So our graph would cut through at negative 1 and 0, so right over there. Okay, as well as uh, the y-intercept at 0 and negative 2. So this would be where the graph cuts. Okay. All right. So there we have it. So this would be negative 2 and 0. And that's 1 and uh, 0 as well. All right. So ladies and gents, what we're going to do and... Now, uh, this is what your graph would look like. Uh, sorry that it's just in the middle of uh, everything else. So I've tried to show the asymptotes there. Okay, right. Now, um, they say to us, uh, use your graph to determine the values of x for which, now note, okay, uh, I think there was an error here. That should be minus one. Okay, for which four over x minus one is greater than negative 2. Now, uh, we can just simply rewrite that. Now, I want you to note, so that would be 4 over x minus 1. Uh, if I take this 2 to the other side, plus 2 should be greater than or equal to 0. So, what is this? This is f of x. So, they want to know where is our graph f of x greater than 0, right? Now, if we go back there, all right, where is our graph greater than zero, right? So notice in this case, um, right, I'm just going to indicate it there in red. Okay, so our graph is greater than zero uh, in this section here. Okay, right, remember after that it becomes less than zero, right? 
And then where else is it greater than zero? After this asymptote here, uh, all of it now becomes greater than zero. So all of this section here is greater than zero, right? So to answer that question, it means that um, x would be an element of negative infinity all the way up until x is negative 1, right? Now, because they just simply said, is it greater than or equal to? Um, yeah, greater than or equal to 0, right? So that means we're going to include this value over here. So till minus 1, which is included, we note that with a square bracket. Remember, negative infinity is never included, right? So, um, and then where is the graph greater than 0 again? After this value, after this asymptote where x is equal to 1, right? So for all values greater than 1, so we're not going to include 1. Why? Because that's our asymptote. It never touches that value there right, all the way up until uh, infinity, our graph will be greater than zero. Now, another way to write this is to simply say x is less than or equal to negative one, or x is greater than one, okay? Right, so that's all values where our graph is greater than zero, all right? Okay, so let's go on to the next one. They say determine the equation of the axis of symmetry uh, of f of x, sorry, that has a negative gradient. Now remember, ladies and gents, for the, um, for the hyperbola, right, we do have axes of symmetry. And for those axes of symmetry, what they do is that both of them actually pass through okay, uh, where your um, asymptotes intersect. Now, our asymptotes are where x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2, right? So the gradient for this one is y is equal to negative x plus uh, c, right? But we do have another one with a positive gradient, okay? So another, uh, now nah, let's take a different color. So another one would be this one over here. That's another, um, uh, you know, uh, that's another set of axes. Rather, that's another axis of symmetry, right? So this would be y is equal to positive x plus another value. Let's just call it, uh, yeah, no, not m. Uh, yeah, let's just call it p, right? So in this case, um, they did say specifically right? The one with the negative gradient. So this is the one that we're going to work with. And we know that it passes through the point one and two. Uh, so let's do that. Okay. Um, so we know y is equal to negative x plus c, right? But now we know it passes through the points one and two. So where y is two, x is one, plus c and to get the value of c uh, take that to the other side it becomes positive so that's three so in this case it means that's y is equal to negative x plus three right i hope that makes sense that was the last question which is 4.2.5 okay i didn't label the drawing to 4.2.4 and um no, actually, 4.2.4 was this one, okay, uh, where we were looking for value greater, and then this was 4.2.5, right? Okay, so I hope that uh, it made sense, ladies and gents, that you were able to follow on in what we're doing. We're going to be doing some more functions uh, in preparation for those exams, so I hope that uh, you guys were able to enjoy that and uh, understand it, most importantly. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.